After years of secretly supporting my sister-in-law, my husband found out and exploded in rage. But now she's pregnant and refuses to say who the father is. He's convinced it's mine I never meant to hide anything from Tom. But when Emily, his younger sister, came to me in tears, I couldn't turn her away. She had just finalised her divorce, and her ex-husband, who I'll call Derek, left her with next to nothing. It was heart-wrenching to see Emily, who had always been so full of life, looking so defeated. She was always the vibrant one in the family, the kind of person who could light up a room just by walking in. But after the divorce, she was a shadow of herself. Tom, my husband, had always had a complicated relationship with Emily. He thought she was too impulsive, too naive, and often accused her of making bad decisions. I had always seen it differently. To me, Emily was a free spirit who sometimes made mistakes, but had a heart of gold. So when she asked me for help, I didn't hesitate. I started sending her money regularly, just enough to help her get back on her feet and cover her living expenses until she could find a steady job. The problem was, I did all of this behind Tom's back. I knew how he'd react if he found out. He'd say I was enabling her, that I was wasting our money on someone who needed to learn how to fend for herself. But I couldn't just sit by and do nothing while Emily struggled. She had been there for me when I needed support, and now it was my turn to be there for her. Months passed, and Emily seemed to be doing better. She started working part-time and was slowly rebuilding her life. She would occasionally call me to thank me for my help and tell me how much it meant to her. I thought I was doing the right thing, even if it meant keeping it a secret from Tom. But secrets have a way of surfacing, don't they? I'll never forget the day Tom found out. It was a Saturday morning and we were going through the bills together, something we did once a month. Tom was always meticulous about our finances and I'd always admired how responsible he was. But that day, as he sifted through the bank statements, his expression changed from calm to confusion, then to anger. What's this? He asked, his voice sharp as a knife. He held up the statement, pointing to the regular transfers I'd been making to Emily's account. My heart dropped. I tried to think of what to say, how to explain, but the words just wouldn't come out. Have you been sending money to Emily? he demanded. His eyes were blazing with anger, and I could see the hurt behind them. How long has this been going on? I swallowed hard, knowing there was no way out of this. For a few months, I admitted, my voice barely above a whisper. She needed help, Tom. She was struggling after the divorce, and I couldn't just ignore her. He slammed the statement down on the table, making me jump. You went behind my back, he said, his voice cold and hard. You didn't even talk to me about it. Do you have any idea how this makes me feel? Like you don't trust me? Like you think I'm the bad guy for not wanting to throw money at her problems? That's not it at all, I tried to explain, but he was too angry to listen. I can't believe you do this, he continued, pacing the kitchen like a caged animal. You know how I feel about Emily's choices, about how she always expects someone else to clean up her messes, and you just went ahead and did it anyway without even considering how I'd feel. I wanted to tell him that I had considered his feelings, that I'd agonized over the decision, but that ultimately, I felt I had no choice. I wanted to explain that Emily was desperate, that she had nowhere else to turn, but Tom wasn't in a place to listen. His anger was palpable, filling the room like a storm cloud ready to burst. The rest of the day passed in tense silence. Tom avoided me, staying locked in his home office, probably trying to cool off. I stayed in the living room, my thoughts a swirling mess of guilt and justification. I kept telling myself that I did the right thing, that Emily needed me, and that Tom would eventually understand. But deep down, I knew that I had betrayed his trust, and that realization gnawed at me. By the time evening rolled around, I couldn't take the silence anymore. I knocked on his office door, and when he didn't answer, I pushed it open and stepped inside, he was sitting at his desk, staring blankly at his computer screen. When he looked up at me, the anger in his eyes had faded, replaced by something worse, disappointment. Tom, I began, my voice trembling. I'm sorry, I should have told you. I know I was wrong to keep this from you. He sighed and rubbed his temples, looking more exhausted than I'd ever seen him. 
It's not just about the money, you know, he said quietly. It's about trust. How can I trust you if you're willing to hide something like this from me? I didn't mean to hurt you, I said, tears welling up in my eyes. I just didn't want to put you in a position where you had to choose between me and Emily. But that's exactly what you did, he replied, his voice heavy with resignation. You chose for me. We sat in silence for what felt like an eternity, the weight of our words hanging in the air. I could see how much I had hurt him, and it broke my heart. I wanted to reach out, to hold him and make everything right again, but I didn't know how. Finally, Tom spoke again. I need some time to think, he said, his voice hollow. I don't know how to move forward from this right now. His words stung, but I nodded, understanding that I had pushed him to this point. Take all the time you need, I whispered, my heart aching with regret. That night, Tom slept in the guest room, and I lay awake in our bed, staring at the ceiling, wondering if I had just ruined everything. The days that followed were a blur of awkward silences and forced smiles. We tried to act normal, but the tension was undeniable. I couldn't shake the feeling that our marriage was teetering on the edge of something irreversible, and I didn't know how to stop it. And then, as if things weren't complicated enough, Emily dropped a bombshell that neither of us saw coming. She was pregnant, and she wouldn't say who the father was. Emily's announcement hit like a thunderclap in the middle of a storm that was already brewing. She called me one evening, her voice shaky and filled with a nervous energy that immediately put me on edge. We hadn't spoken much since Tom discovered our secret. I could tell she felt guilty about being the cause of the rift between us, but she hadn't reached out until now. I need to talk to you, she said, her words tumbling out in a rush. It's important. Can I come over? I hesitated, glancing toward the closed door of the guest room where Tom was holed up, his self-imposed exile still in full effect. Now's not a good time, I replied, trying to keep my voice steady. Can it wait? No, it really can't, Emily insisted. Please, I'll be quick. I just... I need to see you. I could tell something was seriously wrong, so I reluctantly agreed. I met her in our driveway about half an hour later, hoping to avoid another confrontation with Tom. Emily looked pale, her usual vibrancy drained from her face. She hugged herself tightly, her eyes darting around nervously as she approached. What's going on, Em? I asked, trying to keep my tone light despite the knot forming in my stomach. She took a deep breath and blurted it out. I'm pregnant. For a moment, I just stared at her, trying to process what she had said. Pregnant? This couldn't be real. Emily was barely holding her life together as it was. A baby? Now? Are you sure? I finally managed to ask, my voice sounding distant to my own ears. She nodded, tears welling up in her eyes. I'm sure. I took three tests. They all came back positive. Oh, Emily, I whispered, pulling her into a hug. My mind was racing, trying to understand what this meant. For her, for me, and for Tom. Does Tom know? No, she said, pulling back and wiping her eyes. I didn't know how to tell him. I was hoping you could, I don't know, help me figure it out. I felt my chest tighten. Tom was already on edge, and this was the last thing he needed to hear. But before I could say anything, I heard the sound of the front door opening behind us. I turned to see Tom standing there, his face a mix of confusion and irritation. What's going on? He asked, his voice clipped. Why are you two out here? Emily froze, her eyes wide with fear. She wasn't ready to tell him, and I could see the panic setting in. I wanted to protect her, but I knew there was no way out of this now. Tom, I began, my voice trembling. There's something you need to know. He stepped closer, his eyes narrowing as he looked between the two of us. What is it? What are you hiding now? Emily opened her mouth to speak, but no words came out. I knew I had to be the one to break the news. Emily's pregnant, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. Tom's reaction was instantaneous, his face contorted with shock, then quickly morphed into anger. Pregnant, he echoed, his voice rising. Are you serious? Emily nodded, tears spilling down her cheeks. I'm sorry, Tom. I didn't know how to tell you. Who's the father? Tom demanded, his voice laced with accusation. Is it Derek? 
Emily shook her head, biting her lips so hard I thought it might bleed. I... I can't say, she stammered. Tom's eyes flashed with rage. Can't say? What the hell does that mean, Emily? Either you know or you don't. Tom, please, I interjected, trying to calm him down. This is hard for her. She's scared. Scared of what? He snapped, turning his anger toward me. What else are you two hiding from me? His words stung, and I felt a wave of guilt crash over me. He had every right to be angry. First, I hid the financial support, and now this bombshell. I could only imagine what was going through his head. Emily was sobbing now, her shoulders shaking as she tried to regain her composure. I didn't mean for this to happen, she cried. I don't know what to do. Tom ran a hand through his hair, his frustration evident. You don't know what to do. Emily, you're pregnant. This isn't something you can just brush under the rug. We need to know who the father is. When Emily didn't respond, Tom's expression darkened even more. Is it someone you don't want to name? Is that it? Or is it because you're not sure who it is? Emily's sobs grew louder, and I felt a protective instinct kick in. Tom, that's enough, I said firmly. This isn't helping. We need to figure out how to support her, not tear her down. Support her? Tom's voice was incredulous. How can I support her when I don't even know what's going on? How can I trust anything either of you says anymore? His words hung in the air, heavy with the weight of everything that had been left unsaid. I could see the cracks forming in our relationship, and I didn't know how to mend them. Emily, still crying, looked up at Tom with a pleading expression. Please, Tom, I'm begging you. Don't make this harder than it already is. I don't want to talk about the father. It's complicated. Complicated? Tom repeated, his voice dripping with sarcasm. Of course it's complicated. Everything with you is always complicated, Emily. Tom, stop, I said, trying to pull him away. We're not going to solve this by yelling. Let's just take a step back and breathe. But Tom wasn't done. His frustration had reached a boiling point, and I could see the hurt behind his anger. You know what? He said, his voice trembling with emotion. I'm done with this. I'm done with the secrets, the lies, all of it. You two can figure this out without me. With that, he turned and stormed back into the house, slamming the door behind him. The sound echoed in the night air, and I felt a crushing sense of helplessness wash over me. Emily collapsed into my arms, sobbing uncontrollably. I'm so sorry, she kept repeating. I'm so, so sorry. I held her tightly, trying to offer some semblance of comfort, but my mind was reeling. Tom's words echoed in my ears, and I realised just how deep the divide between us had grown. The man I loved was slipping away from me, and I didn't know how to stop it. For the next few days, the house was filled with an unbearable tension. Tom barely spoke to me, and when he did, it was strained and curt. I could see the hurt in his eyes, the betrayal he felt, and it broke my heart. I had hoped that with time, he would calm down, that we could talk things through and find a way to move forward. But as the days passed, it became clear that things weren't going to be that simple. One evening after another day of tense silence, Tom finally broke. I can't do this anymore, he said, his voice hollow. I can't keep living like this, not knowing if I can trust you. Tom, please, I begged, my voice trembling with emotion. We can fix this. We can get through this together. He shook his head, his expression weary. How? How do we fix something that's already broken? You kept things from me. And now there's this whole mess with Emily. I don't even know what to believe anymore. I could feel the tears welling up in my eyes as I tried to find the right words. I'm sorry, Tom. I never meant to hurt you. I just wanted to help Emily. She's been through so much, and I didn't want to burden you with it. But you did burden me, he said, his voice filled with pain. You burdened me with your lies, with your secrets. How do I move past that? I didn't have an answer. All I knew was that I loved him, and I didn't want to lose him. But I could see that he was struggling, that the weight of everything was taking its toll. As if things couldn't get worse, Tom's frustration started turning into suspicion. I could see the wheels turning in his mind, and I knew he was trying to piece together some kind of explanation that made sense to him. One night, as we sat in strained silence, he finally voiced the question that had been gnawing at him. What if the baby is yours? 
he asked, his voice low and dangerous. My breath caught in my throat. What? I whispered, not sure I had heard him correctly. You've been so involved in Emily's life, helping her out behind my back, he continued, his eyes fixed on mine. What if there's more to it? What if the baby is yours, or at least you know who the father is? Tom, that's ridiculous, I said, my heart pounding in my chest. How could you even think that? He leaned forward, his expression intense. I don't know what to think anymore. You've lied to me once. How do I know you're not lying about this too? The accusation cut deep, and I felt a wave of anger rise up inside me. I have never cheated on you, I said firmly, and I'm not lying about this. You're letting your paranoia get the best of you. Am I? He shot back, his voice rising. Or are you just trying to cover your tracks? Emily's refusal to name the father, your secret support. It all adds up, doesn't it? I stared at him, disbelief and hurt mingling in my chest. This was worse than anything I had imagined. He didn't just distrust me. He thought I was capable of betraying him in the worst possible way. Tom, I said, my voice breaking. I would never do that to you. I love you. But he just shook his head, the doubt clear in his eyes. I don't know what to believe anymore. And with those words, I realized just how much damage had been done. Tom's trust in me was shattered, and I didn't know if it could ever be repaired. The days following Tom's devastating accusation were the darkest I'd ever experienced. I felt like I was living in a nightmare, each day worse than the last. Tom's suspicion festered like an open wound, and our home became a battleground of silent glares and curt exchanges. The man who once loved and trusted me now looked at me with a mixture of anger and disbelief, as though I were a stranger who had invaded his life. Emily, too, was a shadow of herself. She avoided coming over, and when we did speak, her voice was fraught with guilt and fear. I knew she was struggling with her own demons, but her silence on the matter of the baby's father only fueled Tom's paranoia. Every time I tried to talk to her about it, she would shut down completely. It was like she had built an impenetrable wall around herself, and I couldn't reach her. One evening, after another tense dinner filled with nothing but the clinking of utensils, Tom finally broke the silence. I've been thinking, he began, his voice cold and measured, and I need to know the truth. I need to know everything. I looked up at him, my heart sinking. I knew this conversation was inevitable, but I dreaded it all the same. Tom, I've already told you everything I know, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. There's nothing more to tell. That's not good enough, he snapped, his frustration evident. I need to know what's really going on. Why won't Emily tell us who the father is? Why are you so involved in this whole mess? It doesn't make sense. She's scared, Tom, I replied, desperately trying to calm him down. She's been through so much already. Maybe she just needs time. Or maybe she's hiding something, he countered, his eyes narrowing. Something that you know about, something you're not telling me. The accusation hung in the air between us, heavy and suffocating. I could feel the tears welling up in my eyes, but I blinked them back, refusing to let him see me break down. I swear to you, I'm not hiding anything, I said, my voice trembling. Emily hasn't told me who the father is. I don't know any more than you do. Tom didn't respond immediately. He just stared at me, his expression unreadable. I could see the wheels turning in his mind, trying to piece together a puzzle that didn't exist. Finally, he spoke, his voice low and dangerous. Then we'll find out, he said. I'm not going to let this go until I know the truth. I wanted to protest, to tell him that this relentless pursuit of the truth was tearing us apart, but I knew it was pointless. Tom had made up his mind, and nothing I said would change that. The next day, Tom insisted that we visit Emily together. He didn't tell me his exact plan, but I knew he intended to confront her and force the truth out, whatever it might be. As we drove to Emily's small apartment, I could feel the tension between us, thick and suffocating. Neither of us spoke, the silence only broken by the hum of the car engine. I kept glancing at Tom, hoping to see some sign that he was having second thoughts, but his expression remained stony and determined. When we arrived, Emily looked surprised to see both of us. She glanced at me with questioning eyes, but I could only offer her a weak smile in return. The apartment was small and cluttered, a far cry from the spacious home she once shared with Derek. 
I could see how much her situation had deteriorated since the divorce, and it made me feel even more guilty for the state she was in. Tom didn't waste any time. As soon as we were inside, he turned to Emily, his expression hard. We need to talk, Emily, he said bluntly. I'm done with the secrets. You need to tell us who the father is. Emily's face paled and she took a step back, her hand instinctively moving to her stomach. Tom, please, I can't. You can, and you will, he interrupted, his voice unyielding. You're not the only one affected by this. Your silence is tearing us all apart. We deserve to know the truth. I watched as Emily's eyes filled with tears and she shook her head frantically. I can't, Tom. It's not that simple. Tom took a deep breath, trying to rein in his anger. Why isn't it simple? What are you so afraid of? Emily didn't respond immediately. She looked at me, her eyes pleading for help, but I didn't know what to do. I felt utterly helpless, caught between my husband's relentless demands and my sister-in-law's desperate fear. Finally, Emily broke the silence. The father, he doesn't know, she admitted, her voice barely above a whisper. Tom's expression darkened. What do you mean he doesn't know? Are you saying you're hiding this from him too? Emily nodded, her tears now flowing freely. Yes, he doesn't know because I don't want him to know. Tom was furious now. Why? What kind of man are you protecting? Is it Derek? Is that why you're so afraid? No, it's not Derek, Emily said quickly, shaking her head. It's not him, but I can't tell you who it is. Please, just trust me. Trust you? Tom echoed, his voice filled with disbelief. How can we trust you when you're keeping secrets like this? I could see Emily crumbling under the pressure, and I couldn't bear it any longer. Tom, stop, I pleaded. She's clearly terrified. We're not going to get anywhere by pushing her like this. But Tom was relentless. We're not leaving until we get answers, he said firmly. You owe us that much, Emily. The room fell into a tense silence, with Emily sobbing quietly as Tom stared at her, his patience wearing thin. I wanted to reach out to her, to comfort her, but I knew that would only make things worse. Finally, Emily spoke again, her voice trembling. If I tell you, it will destroy everything, she said. You don't understand. This isn't just about me. There are other people involved and I can't ruin their lives. Tom's eyes narrowed. What do you mean, other people? What are you talking about, Emily? She hesitated, clearly struggling with the decision to reveal the truth. After what felt like an eternity, she finally spoke, her voice barely audible. The father, he's married, she confessed, her voice trembling with fear. Tom's face went white as the words sank in. He took a step back, clearly reeling from the shock. He's married? He repeated, his voice hollow. You've been having an affair? Emily nodded fresh tears spilling down her cheeks. Yes, and if it comes out, it will destroy his family. I can't do that, Tom, I won't. I felt the air leave the room as the weight of her words settled over us. Tom looked at me, his expression a mixture of anger and disbelief. And you knew about this? He demanded. Is this what you've been hiding from me? No, I protested, my heart pounding. I swear, I didn't know. Emily never told me any of this but I could see the doubt in his eyes, the suspicion that had taken root deep within him. He no longer knew what to believe and I couldn't blame him. The situation had spiraled so far out of control that nothing seemed certain anymore. Tom turned back to Emily, his voice cold and detached. You need to end this, he said. Whatever you think you're protecting, it's not worth the destruction it's causing. I can't, Emily replied, her voice trembling. I've already made my choice and I have to live with it. Tom shook his head, his expression one of utter disgust. You've made your bed, Emily. Now you have to lie in it. With that, he turned and stormed out of the apartment, leaving me and Emily standing there in stunned silence. I wanted to go after him, to try and reason with him, but I knew it was useless. Tom was beyond reasoning, his mind clouded with anger and betrayal. I turned to Emily, who was now sitting on the edge of the couch, her face buried in her hands as she sobbed uncontrollably. My heart ached for her, but I also felt a deep sense of dread. This wasn't just about Emily anymore. Her secret had become a ticking time bomb, and I didn't know how much longer we could keep it from exploding. I sat down beside her, gently placing a hand on her shoulder. Emily, 
You need to tell the father, I said softly. This isn't something you can handle on your own. I can't, she whispered, her voice thick with despair. If I tell him, everything will fall apart. His marriage, his family, it will all be ruined. And what about you? I asked, my voice filled with concern. What about your baby? You can't do this alone, Emily. You need support. I'll figure it out, she replied, though I could hear the uncertainty in her voice. I just need more time. I wanted to believe her, but deep down, I knew that time was running out. The truth had a way of coming out, no matter how much we tried to bury it. And when it did, the fallout would be catastrophic. As I left Emily's apartment that night, I couldn't shake the feeling of impending doom. Tom was unravelling, Emily was spiralling, and I was caught in the middle of a storm that showed no signs of letting up. When I got home, Tom was sitting in the living room, staring blankly at the TV, though it was clear he wasn't watching anything. I approached him cautiously, not sure what to say or do. He didn't acknowledge me as I sat down beside him, the silence between us more deafening than any argument we could have had. Tom, I began softly, I'm so sorry for everything. I never wanted things to get this far. He finally looked at me, his eyes filled with a deep sadness that broke my heart. I don't know who you are anymore, he said quietly. I thought I knew you, but now I'm not sure of anything. His words cut through me like a knife and I felt tears prickling at the corners of my eyes. I'm still the same person, Tom, I whispered, my voice thick with emotion. I love you and I'm so sorry for the pain I've caused, but we can get through this. We just need to stick together. Tom sighed, his shoulders slumping in defeat. I don't know if we can, he said, his voice hollow. There's just too much damage, too many lies. I reached out to him, taking his hand in mine, but he pulled away, the gesture like a physical blow. I need time, he said, his voice cracking. I need to figure out if I can even trust you again. With that, he got up and walked away, leaving me alone in the living room, my heart shattered into a million pieces. I knew then that I was losing him, and I didn't know how to stop it. The man I loved was slipping through my fingers, and I was powerless to do anything about it. As the night dragged on, I sat in the darkness, the weight of everything crashing down on me. Tom's words echoed in my mind, and I realised that our marriage was hanging by a thread, one that could snap at any moment. And in the back of my mind, a gnawing fear took hold. What if Tom was right? What if Emily's secret was just the tip of the iceberg? What if there was more to this than even I knew? The thought was terrifying, and as I finally drifted off to sleep, I knew that our lives would never be the same again. In the days that followed, my life felt like a tightrope walk over an abyss. Tom's distance only grew, and each time we spoke, it felt like we were strangers, navigating a conversation without a shared language. He'd taken to staying out late, coming home after I'd already gone to bed, and leaving early in the morning before I woke. When he was home, the silence between us was a chasm I didn't know how to bridge. Emily was no better. She avoided me, our calls dwindling to almost nothing. I knew she was trying to keep her distance, afraid that her presence would only make things worse between Tom and me. But her absence was just as painful. I was completely isolated, caught between my unravelling marriage and the spiralling mess of Emily's life. It all came to a head one Friday evening. Tom hadn't come home yet, and I was sitting alone in the kitchen, staring at the cold dinner I had prepared, my appetite long gone. The house felt empty, like all the warmth had been sucked out, leaving behind nothing but the echoes of happier times. As I sat there, lost in thought, the sound of the front door creaking open snapped me back to reality. Tom walked in, looking exhausted, his shoulders slumped as if carrying the weight of the world. He glanced at me briefly before heading toward the guest room, but something in me snapped. I couldn't let this go on any longer. Tom! I called out, my voice firmer than I expected. He paused, his hand on the doorknob, but didn't turn around. We need to talk. We can't keep avoiding this. He sighed heavily, but didn't move. What's there to talk about? He muttered, his tone defeated. You made your choices. Emily made hers. And now we're all dealing with the consequences. I stood up, my heart pounding as I walked toward him. We're not dealing with anything. 
We're just letting everything fall apart around us, I said, my voice thick with emotion. But we can't keep living like this, Tom. I can't keep living like this. Finally, he turned to face me, his expression weary. What do you want me to say? He asked, his voice barely above a whisper. That everything's fine. That I'm okay with the lies and the secrets. Because I'm not. I know you're not, I said, taking a step closer. And I'm not asking you to be. But I am asking you to give me a chance to make things right. To talk this through. To find some way to move forward. He looked at me. And for a moment, I thought I saw a flicker of the man I fell in love with. The man who used to believe in us, no matter what. But it was quickly overshadowed by the pain and mistrust that had built up over the past few weeks. Where do we even start? He asked, his voice tinged with bitterness. How do we fix something that's this broken? I reached out and took his hand, relieved when he didn't pull away this time. We start by being honest with each other, I said softly, completely honest, even if it hurts. Tom looked down at our intertwined hands, his expression conflicted. And what if the truth is too much? He asked, his voice barely audible. We deal with it together, I replied, squeezing his hand. We're stronger than this, Tom, I know we are. He didn't respond, but he didn't let go either. That small gesture gave me a glimmer of hope that maybe, just maybe, we could find our way back to each other. Before either of us could say more, there was a sudden, frantic knock on the front door. Tom and I exchanged a puzzled glance before I walked over to answer it. When I opened the door, Emily stood on the other side, her face pale and her eyes wide with panic. I need to talk to you both, she blurted out, her voice trembling. I can't keep this secret any longer. It's eating me alive. My heart sank as I stepped aside to let her in, knowing that whatever she had to say would either help heal the rift between us or tear it open even wider. Tom was visibly tense as Emily entered the living room, avoiding his gaze. She looked at me first, then finally turned to face him, her eyes filled with regret and fear. I'm so sorry, she began, her voice shaking. I never meant to drag you both into this mess. I thought I could handle it on my own, but I can't. And I know it's time I told you the truth, all of it. Tom's jaw tightened, but he nodded for her to continue. Just tell us, Emily. Whatever it is, just say it. Emily took a deep breath, her hands trembling as she clasped them in front of her. The father, he's not who you think, she began, her voice barely above a whisper. It's not Derek. And it's not someone random, it's someone you both know. My stomach dropped as a sense of dread filled me. I could see Tom's expression darken as well, his eyes narrowing. Who is it? He demanded, his voice low and dangerous. Emily hesitated, her eyes filling with tears. It's David, she finally confessed, her voice breaking. The name hit me like a sledgehammer. David was Tom's best friend, a man who had been in our lives for years. He was married, with two kids, and had always been the picture of a devoted husband and father. The idea that he could be the father of Emily's child was beyond comprehension. Tom's face went white with shock, and for a moment I thought he might actually collapse. David? He echoed, his voice filled with disbelief. You had an affair with David? Emily nodded, tears streaming down her face. It wasn't supposed to happen, she sobbed. It just did. We were both going through so much and it just happened. But I knew it was wrong and I've been carrying this guilt ever since. Tom looked like he was going to explode. His fists clenched and unclenched, his entire body trembling with rage. I trusted him, he shouted, his voice filled with fury. I trusted both of you. How could you do this? I'm so sorry, Tom, Emily cried, her voice filled with desperation. I never wanted to hurt you. I never wanted any of this to happen. I was too stunned to speak, my mind racing as I tried to process what I had just heard. The betrayal was almost too much to comprehend. David had been a part of our lives for years, and now the very foundation of that friendship was shattered. Tom turned to me, his eyes filled with pain. Did you know? He demanded. Did you know it was him? No. I whispered, shaking my head frantically. I swear I had no idea. Emily never told me. I would have never kept that from you. But I could see the doubt in his eyes, the distrust that had taken root and refused to let go. 
It was like a knife twisting in my heart, knowing that nothing I said could erase the damage that had been done. Tom let out a harsh, bitter laugh, running his hands through his hair in frustration. Unbelievable, he muttered. This whole time, I've been driving myself crazy, wondering if it was someone you knew, someone close to you, and it was David, my best friend. Emily sobbed harder, her hands covering her face as she crumpled onto the couch. I'm so sorry, she kept repeating, her voice muffled by her tears. I'm so, so sorry. Tom was pacing now, his anger barely contained. Does he know? He asked, his voice shaking with fury. Does David know he's the father? Emily shook her head, her voice barely audible as she replied. No, I never told him. I couldn't. I didn't want to destroy his family. You didn't want to destroy his family? Tom repeated incredulously. But what about mine? What about our family, Emily? Or did that not matter? His words were like a slap, and I could see the guilt and regret etched on Emily's face. I didn't want to hurt anyone, she whispered. But I know I have, and I'm so sorry. Tom turned to me, his expression filled with a mix of anger and despair. What do we do now? He asked, his voice trembling. How do we move forward from this? I didn't have an answer. My mind was spinning, the weight of the truth crashing down on me. Everything felt so broken, so far beyond repair, that I didn't know where to even begin. But I knew one thing. If we didn't try to move forward, we would lose everything. I took a deep breath, gathering my thoughts before speaking. We deal with it, one step at a time, I said softly. It's not going to be easy, and it's going to take time, but we can get through this. We have to. Tom looked at me, his eyes filled with a mix of hurt and uncertainty. I don't know if I can, he admitted, his voice barely above a whisper. This is too much. It's all too much. I stepped closer, reaching out to take his hand. I know it is, I said, my voice thick with emotion. But we can't let this destroy us. We've been through so much together, Tom. Don't let this be the thing that tears us apart. He looked down at our hands, his expression conflicted. I could see the war raging inside him, the battle between his love for me and the betrayal he felt. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, he squeezed my hand, a small but significant gesture that gave me hope. Emily looked up at us, her tear-streaked face filled with regret. I'll leave town, she said quietly. I'll go somewhere else, away from all of this. Maybe that will help. Tom shook his head, his voice firm. Running away won't solve anything, Emily. You need to take responsibility for your actions, no matter how hard it is. She nodded, clearly ashamed. I will, she promised, her voice trembling. I'll tell David the truth. He deserves to know. It was a small step, but it was a start. As we sat there in the aftermath of Emily's confession, I knew that the road ahead would be long and difficult. Trust, once broken, was hard to rebuild and the wounds from this betrayal would take time to heal. But for the first time in weeks, I felt a glimmer of hope. Tom hadn't walked away. He was still here, still holding my hand. And as long as we were together, I knew we had a chance. The days that followed were filled with difficult conversations, raw emotions and painful truths. Emily, true to her word, told David everything. The fallout was devastating. His marriage crumbled under the weight of the revelation, and he lost his family in the process. It was a harsh reminder of how one mistake could destroy so much, and the guilt weighed heavily on all of us. Tom and I started couples therapy, a step I knew we needed to take if we were going to have any chance of moving forward. It wasn't easy, and there were moments when it felt like we were making no progress at all. But little by little, we began to rebuild the trust that had been shattered, it would never be the same as before, but we were learning to forgive, to communicate, and to heal. Emily decided to move away, not to escape, but to start fresh and focus on her baby. She wanted to give her child the best life possible, and she knew that meant putting her past behind her and making amends. We kept in touch, but the distance was necessary for all of us. As I sat with Tom one evening, months after Emily's confession, I realized just how far we had come. We were still fragile, still working through the pain, but we were together, and that was what mattered most. I'm sorry for everything, I said. 
my voice soft as I rested my head on his shoulder. I'm sorry for the secrets, for the lies, for everything that happened. Tom wrapped his arm around me, pulling me close. I'm sorry too, he whispered. I let my anger get the best of me and I hurt you, but I'm glad we're still here, still fighting. I smiled, feeling a sense of peace that I hadn't felt in a long time. We're stronger than this, I said, echoing the words I had told him that night. And we're going to be okay. It would take time, and there would be more challenges ahead, but I knew that as long as we faced them together, we could get through anything. For now, that was enough. <laughs>